Thank you so much for listening to this teaching. And I believe that you will learn so many things from the Lord and the truth shall set you free. God bless you. Please listen to the teaching carefully. This morning, I'm going to go ahead right away to teach. It's going to be different kind of teaching, different style. And I'm going to go very fast and right to the point. I will not go around the bush, just right to the point because I need to read a lot of scriptures to show you. And let us pray together that the Lord will speak to us. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we will learn your word. We want to understand your truth, and your truth shall set us free. We thank you, Father, who love us so much, and you send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, Lord. Lord, your people will not only hear what I say, but they will hear more than what I say, because your Holy Spirit will speak to the heart deeper than what man can say. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would like to talk about the eternal rewards and want to encourage you to live your life for God. God has many promises in the Bible concerning the rewards of the saints or the believers. He wants to give us reward when we do the right thing. And the rewards are not the bribe, but they are incentive. Even though we walk with God, serve God, do things for God, not for the rewards, but we do it because we love Him, because we fear Him, because He is our Creator. And we want to please him. But he promised the rewards for our life. As like heavenly, uh, the earthly father, when the children has done good thing, the earthly father will reward the children. I remember when I was about six, seven years old, when I passed the test and get a good grade, my dad drove me to the toy store. I never forgot. And he bought toy every time I get the good grade from the examination, and I love the toy. I usually like the toy of uh, like guns and you know, soldier because I want to be soldier at that time. So I remember my dad rewarded me in the same way the Heavenly Father wanted to reward you. Let me read from the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 to 15. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We do everything for Jesus Christ. Not for the church name, not for man, not for personal benefit, for Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day, notice the day is capital D, which means the day of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Basically, he tried to say, you can do things, but he's going to look at your motive and your attitude in serving. Are you doing things out of personal gain or for the reputation of people accept you, or do you do out of the right motive? You love God, you want to glorify the name of Jesus Christ or not? He's going to use his fire. Actually, the Bible talks about four kinds of fire I want to explain quickly here. The first fire is the fire of the Holy Spirit, the baptism with fire, to burn the tongue out of you so that you will not do things out of wrong motive. The second fire, the fire at the judgment seat of Christ that will come and test and examine your deeds on earth. The third kind of fire is the fire of hell, and we don't want to go there. Number four, the fire of hardships, that we all go through hardships, to pass the test so that we can prove and show that we are having genuine faith. This fire at the judgment seat of Christ, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. This is a second fire. When we serve God with a wrong motive or do things with a wrong motive, we will not get any rewards in heaven, but we don't have to go to hell. We go to heaven, but no rewards. This scripture talk about God going to judge you at the judgment seat of Christ, not to judge for your salvation, because salvation has been dealt with at Calvary. He died for you already. So if you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven, and you will not have to go to hell. 
But the question at the judgment seat of Christ is that, will you get the reward? And how much reward you're going to get? We're going to go into detail in this teaching. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 to 11 say, For we must all, everyone say all, no exception, all believers, appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in this body. So what are you doing in earth, in this body right now? So sometime I heard the theology that, oh, we don't need to repent, we don't need to do anything, just get lazy, do nothing. That is a wrong doctrine. God still look at our action, even though we're saved by faith. We are not going to heaven by deeds, but the reward is determined by our deeds, and what we have done in this body. According to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are all well known to God. And I also trust as well known in your conscience. The Bible talks about the judgment seat of Christ. So we live on earth, one day we will die, or one day if Jesus come back before we die, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And that judgment seat of Christ, he's going to judge us one by one. He opened the book and show, okay, this is how you spend time. This is how you spend money. This is how you are faithful to my tithing, to my money that you return to me. And this is the way you cheat me, you never tie to me. He's going to open the book and he's going to judge you not for salvation in heaven, but judge you to see whether you have rewards or not in heaven. How many people want reward? I want reward. Romans chapter 14, 10 to 12. As I say, I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written... As I live, say the Lord, every knee shall bow before me. That day we will bow before Jesus. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. On that day, when Jesus come back, we're all going to kneel down before Jesus. And we're going to give our account to him. Pastor Lau cannot help you. Your wife cannot help you. Your husband cannot help you. You alone will give account to God. In fact, after we receive Jesus Christ, we have the privilege to become the son or the daughter of God. And God, the creator, become our daddy. He takes care of us. We have the privilege to be a child of the living God. But with privilege, it comes with responsibility. That is to obey the father, to serve the father, and to do the right thing, to obey him. Privilege. Responsibility, and number three, with responsibility, we have accountability. One day, we're going to have to give our account to God before his throne. So all of us are going to stand before God and give our account to him, how we spend time, how we spend our energy, how we use our home, our gifts and talents for God or not. We're going to be judged on that day. What we are being judged on that day at the judgment seat of Christ is not about going to heaven or hell or not, but it's about our work and service done in this body on earth. I was just looking at the worship team up here. They're leading worship, and I was thinking, wow, God record their work up here, and they're going to have reward in heaven because they serve God. They have to practice and spend time. So God's going to reward them because God is just and fair. He will not let you use you for free. He's going to reward you one day. So he's going to judge you. He look at your works and your service done in this body for the Lord Jesus Christ. What else? He's going to judge your conduct toward other people. How you treat your wife, how you treat your boss, how you treat brother and sister, your pastor, your co-workers. He's going to judge you according to your conduct. Not only that, he judge your labor. How you spend your energy and time in this planet Earth. And your also motive going to be tested and examine what you do. Why you get involved in the worship team. Because you love God or because you want to be on the stage and want to look famous. 
He's going to test your motivation, your attitude, everything in detail at the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible promises about the reward in Matthew chapter 25, verses 20 to 23. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you deliver to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done and good faithful servant. I want God to call all of you. Well done, good faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Luke chapter 19, 12 to 19. Again, I'm going to read a lot of scripture here. Therefore, he said, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. This one talk about Jesus. He went back to heaven and he go, one day, he's going to come back. Second coming of Jesus, he's going to return to this earth. When he returned, he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas and said to them, do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded this servant to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So he get the money and he need to use money. Or this servant had to use money to be productive, to produce for the kingdom of God. Then came the first saying, Master, your mina, has earned 10 minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over 10 cities. The second came saying, master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, so he said to him, you also be over five cities. The Bible talk about the rewards in heaven. There are three kinds of rewards in heaven. I'm going to read in a few minutes here. The first reward is the reward of the glory. You have the glory, the rewards of power, the rewards of position, the rewards of authority, and the reward of the crowd. We have different kinds of reward in heaven. In this scripture, the Bible says that God gives each and every one of us different amount of talents, abilities, Spiritual gifts, finances, time, education. We are different according to our ability. How are we going to spend time, money, ability, education, spiritual gift, talents, and everything we have that God gives to us? In fact, we came to the world with zero. How many kids? Have you ever seen a kid come out from the mother's womb with a diamond ring on their finger? <laughs> Never. And how many of you have seen people who die, went to the tomb or went to the funeral ceremony and take even one penny with him? No. Zero. When you come into the world, God gives you something. Give you time, education, ability, money, give you spiritual gift. He gives to you. But the, answer, the question is, how you use those things on this planet Earth? Number one, are you using them for your own benefit, for your own fame and personal gain? Or you use them for the kingdom of God, for the king? Two, are you faithful to use those things? And three, what kind of motive 
do you have in using those things? So you have to check your heart all the time. God has given us the good things in our life. Some of you are businessmen, and you make a lot of money. The question is, how do you use that money? Is for yourself, hoard, 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 hoarding, hoarding for yourself, or you use that money for the kingdom of God? In Matthew chapter 24, God exhorts us to think about the second coming of Jesus Christ. But Matthew chapter 25, the Bible says, hey, Jesus is coming back. How do you live? How do you live on this earth? What life do you have? Are you doing something for God? Are you using your money, talents, ability for the kingdom of God or not? Because Matthew 25 says, you all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he will judge you. God wants you to be faithful in using what you have for his kingdom. And on that day, he's going to judge you what you have done on earth. You know, I have done my part here now. On that day, when Jesus come back, you cannot blame your pastor anymore that I never taught this lesson. And you waste your time away and you just keep doing something for yourself. You, are you living for the kingdom of God? Or you spend your time, money for your own sake, for your own yourself? That is the question. The Lord does not promise the rewards as a bribe. He promised you as an incentive that whatever you do, God will reward you. I have to admit to you, so many times in my life, I want to quit being a pastor. Why? i rather enjoy being a neurosurgeon, making money and enjoy my life. I have to be a pastor. But I know that when I serve God and work hard for God, I will have rewards in heaven one day. And that reward, those rewards will be eternal. No thief can steal from me. I cannot even share with my wife. I'm sorry. My reward is my reward. Your reward is your reward. Each one of us has your own reward and we cannot share. And that reward is going to stay with you for eternity. So that's incentive that makes me work hard for God. Not only that I love God and I want to please God, but I know one day I will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Beside eternal life, beside transform glorious body, one day you're all going to look 18, 20 years old all the time. No more aging. No more plastic surgery in Korea. No more, no more hair loss. You don't have to put the foam on your head anymore to get the hair grow back up again. You don't need to worry about having plastic surgery. You're going to look 18, 20 years old for the rest, for the eternity in heaven. You're going to have a new, glorious, transformed body in heaven. And you have eternal life. And you have the joy of being around Jesus and the Father in heaven. Beside that, you're going to have reward. The reward of position, authority, and crown. Now we're going to read many scriptures, okay? Listen carefully. What kind of rewards are you going to get? Matthew chapter 25, 21 to 23. The reward of faithfulness. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Everyone say, The reward of the faithful. <laughs> Lately, God show me the importance of being faithful. You know, it's so easy to come to church for the first few months and get excited. Pastor, I want to serve. Oh, yeah, I love this church. Oh, I'm so excited. One year later, where is he? <laughs> He's gone. And now I don't care about the church anymore. Now I want to make money. When you are faithful to the end, you're faithful years after years, 10 years 50 years from now, you still serve God. You are there. God can depend on you because you're faithful. God rewards the faithful. Amen? Amen? How many people say, I want to be faithful? Faithful to the calling I have. Faithful in using everything I have for the kingdom of God. Amen? Beside the reward of the faithful, the crowd of life. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. 
For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You're going to receive the crown of life. Revelation 2.10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. When you serve God sometime, the devil will fight against you, attack you. Don't be afraid. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful. Be faithful. Don't quit. I pray all the time that all of you are going to be good soil because there are four kinds of soil. The first one, those who receive the word and don't care, walk away. The second one, the soil with rock, they receive the word of God and they get persecution and they walk away. Three, the soil with thorns, people who receive Jesus and the temptation of the world, the love of the things in the world, make them walk away. I want you to be good soil, that you're faithful to the end, okay? Faithful until death, I will give you the crowd of life. You want the crowd of life? I want the crowd of life. First Peter 5 to, to 4, the crowd of life, the crowd of glory. Shepherd the flocks of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain. This scripture talked to the pastor, to the elders, to the leaders in the church. But eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, appears, the second coming of the Lord Jesus, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crowd of glory that does not fade away. The Bible talks about the crowd of glory. Can we show the picture a little bit there? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But when see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowd with glory and honor. God wants to give us the crowd of glory because we are faithful. We serve him. We take care of his people, take care of his sheep. I want to encourage all of you. You may not be a pastor like me, but you should make a decision to be involved in taking care of other people. Maybe cook for them, serve them, visit them, pray for them. You look after God's sheep for him. God say, if you love me, you take care of my sheep. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't need to be a pastor like me, but you take care of God's people around you. And he's going to give you the crowd of glory. Not only that, the crowd of rejoicing. 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 to 20. For what is our hope or joy or crowd of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. Everyone say, the joy of rejoicing. rejoicing. When he put the crowd on your head, the crowd of rejoicing, you laugh. You cannot stop, stop laughing. Ha, 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 ho, 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 ho. You just keep laughing. It's fun to be in the presence of God. How many people believe that the word of God does not lie? You believe God is real? Yes. You believe what he says in the Bible is true? Uh, this is not my own idea. I'm reading the Bible here. We want to receive the reward of the faithful and the crowd. Many kind of crowds. The crowd of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4.8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crowd of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, capital D the day of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing, the crowd of righteousness. My brothers and sisters, every single second, we're getting closer to death. This morning, Pastor Da said to me, honey, we have less, less time now together. Maybe I will live another 20 years. This is what Pastor Da said. And I said, no, you live more than 20 years. You're going to live to 120 years, <laughs> 50 more years. She said, no, I don't want to live that long because I don't want to bother my kids and my grandkids. No, we want to see our great-grandkids live to 120 years and great-great-grandkids. But no matter what, we're going to die one day. 
and we are losing the second every minute right now. Every minute is gone, and every minute goes by. We are getting closer to death or the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, please, don't waste your time anymore. Live your life for the kingdom. Get involved in saving souls, building the church, making disciple, getting involved. I know you need time to rest and watch some TV and uh, go out to work out club and like this and whatever you need to do. I know. I, I know you need some time to shop, but you shop for God. You clean ditches for God. You go to the workout club for God. Everything for God. Amen? I don't know how, what they do in the workout club. I just <laughs> imagine. You do everything for God. You spend money for God. Every house I buy, I think about how can I use my house for the kingdom of God. I never just buy the house for myself. I think about the kingdom. I seek the kingdom of God first. Every single minute go by. I live for the kingdom. We pray for people. We love people. Even when you say to your wife, I loved you. You're so beautiful. That is for the kingdom. I'm serious. Everyone sit with your wife, say, you're beautiful. You do. I don't say you say it. I told Pastor Da every day. You do everything for the kingdom. You treat people with respect and honor. You love people. You get involved in the ministry in the church. You use your gift and talents for the kingdom so that you can receive the crowd of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Don't waste your time. Amen. Live your life count for the king, for the something in eternal. Don't just live your life for the house on earth here. I don't care about much about the house anymore. I don't care much about car. I don't care. Because if we're gone one day. I want to accumulate rewards in heaven. I'm sending material to build my mansion in heaven right now. Send material. Everyone says, send materials for my mansion in heaven. And that mansion in heaven will never fade away. But the house here, you have to sometimes call people to repent it. In heaven, no repenting. The house will stay there for eternity, your mansion. Think about eternity. Amen? Not only the crowd of righteousness, the incorruptible crowd. 1 Corinthians 9, 25 to 27. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crowd. Talking about the athletes, that they run for the perishable crowd. But we, for an unperishable crowd, therefore I run, thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Subjection to the word, subject to the Holy Spirit, and to the will of God. I use my body for the will of God. When I have preached to others, I myself should, be, should become disqualified. Everyone say, the incorruptible crowd. It will never get old. It stay there forever. Amen? Incorruptible crowd. Not only that, the crowd of the servant of God and the righteous man. Matthew chapter 10, 41 to 42. Are you okay? I'm going fast. I try to educate you here. Matthew 10, 41 to 42. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. The Bible talks about reward. The reward, prophet means the leader in the body of Christ. It can be pastor, teachers, prophet, evangelist, the leader. The appointed leader. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So God gives reward to righteous man. And when you take care of the righteous man, when I read this scripture, I think about one lady in this church. Her name is Mother Nob. She is the mother of Pastor Sam, the Thai service. Every Sunday, she will bring drink to me. 
and somebody will cook lunch for me. Take care. When you take care of a righteous man, when you take care of a leader, you get the same reward as your leader. Wow. You like that? That's why we need to love and respect our leader and take care of them. And you should take care of each other. Amen? Amen. When you pick up a new believer, a righteous person from the home come to church, you get the reward too. Serving one another, take care of one another. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, which means that even young believers in the church or little kids. A few days ago, God told me, from now on, when you walk by little kids in the church, say hi to them. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Tap that shoulder. Show love to them. The, the Lord told me. We should do that to our kids. Don't walk by the kids and, hey, <laughs> you're on my way. No, say hi to them. Give me five. Amen? Amen? The little ones, new believers, young believers, and little kids, take care of them. As surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. We want to take care of people, the righteous people around us, our friends in the church, our leaders, take care of them, serve them, and make sure you treat the kids very well in the church. Not only the reward of the leaders and righteous men, another one, the reward to God's saint and servant. Revelation 11:18. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. The Bible says that when you decide to give your life to God to serve him, it doesn't matter what ministry, maybe sound ministry, maybe uh, children ministry. You don't just come to church and sit around doing nothing. You say, hey, pastor, I want to serve. Maybe serve in the kitchen, maybe cooking, maybe archer, whatever. I want to serve. I'm a servant of God. I'm not going to be around doing nothing. I'm going to be involved in the ministry. I'm going to build your kingdom. God say, I have reward for my servant. Are you the servant of God? Yes. Are you the pew warmers? No. You just sit around, warm the seat, and go home. Are you the consumer? Come, hey, anyone can give me money. Or oh, anyone can uh, show love to me, 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 me. No, not about you. It's about the kingdom. Amen. And when you take care of the kingdom, he will take care of you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I know the teaching is quite strong, but I go straight forward now. I don't go around the bush. Revelation 4.4. 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, this talking about authority and power. I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. Everyone say, the crowd of gold. How many people want to have $10 in your bank account? Raise your hand up. Wow, I don't need to do brain transplant. How many people want to have 10 million in your account? Wow, I don't see any hesitation. Everyone wants 10 millions. How many people want a lot of rewards in heaven? Do you want a little reward or more? How many people want to have a big mansion in heaven? Yes. Ocean front yes. with snow-capped mountain in front of your house. Do you want? Yes. Don't waste your time on earth. Live for the kingdom. Yes. Serve God. Use your gift. Be faithful. Don't give excuses. No excuses. Serve God. Yes. Amen. Do the best you can. And you're going to have reward in heaven. Yeah. Revelation 3.11, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have. Hold fast to what you're called to do. But no one may take your crowd. God say, if you hold fast to what God called you to do, keep going, being faithful. No one can take your crowd away in heaven. Amen. On earth, 
you may lose your diamond ring because somebody stole from you. But in heaven, no one can take your reward from you. Please don't live your life for only the things in the world. Amen? Amen. I'm almost done. The Lord Jesus always encourages to get ready to meet him. Revelation 22, 12. Listen carefully. This is why I don't believe in lay back Christians. I don't believe in the theology of no repentance and live loose life. You can sin, you can do whatever you want. God has grace for me. No, the grace is to save you from hell. It's not to give to you to live a loose life. Actually, if you study the Bible carefully, the word grace means he gives you power and favor to serve him and to be productive for him, not to live loose life or lazy life. Look at Revelation 22, 12. Listen carefully. And behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone who sit around doing nothing, who get lazy, who never repent, who live for themselves, who just question, whatever will be, will be. No, he said, to everyone according to his work. Should Christian work? Should Christian be lazy? We should work for God. Build a kingdom. Amen. Some of you may not like me anymore. <laughs> Luke chapter 6, verse 23. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For indeed, your reward is great in heaven. For in the manner their fathers did to the prophets. Can this belong to you, this scripture? Your reward is great in heaven. Is there heaven in, is there reward in heaven? Yes. Do you want reward in heaven? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Now live for God. Beside those rewards, let me give you more scripture to tell you what you're going to get in heaven. And I'll make a conclusion. Number one, Matthew 25, 46. And this will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. When you believe in Jesus, you walk with him to the end. You repent of your sin. You shall have eternal life in heaven. You will not have eternal death in hell. So that's why I work so hard to try to get people saved. I'm willing to work hard, losing sleep. Why? Actually, I'm going to fly to Thailand tomorrow, and I don't like to sit in the airplane at all. I don't like jet lag at all. But I know that 3,000 people are going to show up in a meeting. And many souls are going to be saved there. Many lives are going to be saved. I was so happy to, to see those two believers, new believers in Virginia. And I asked them, how you come to know Jesus? They say, my friend sent your YouTube to me. I listened one time, the Holy Spirit touched me, and I got saved. And I gave my life to Jesus. Two Cambodian couples. Two Cambodian couples show up in a meeting and say, do you know your teaching right now spread all over Cambodia and so many people got saved now. Amen. We want to preach the gospel. We want to save soul. Amen. Because we want them to have eternal life. Parents, take serious about being example to your kids. Take serious about Talk to them, talking to them, showing love to them, lead them to the church. If they still eat on your table, don't give them option. No option. Go to church. If you don't go to church with me, hey, get out of this house. You eat free food from me. You need to obey me. You, not, it's not about going to church. It's about they will know Jesus. And they have the community of believers and they will not backslide and walk away from God. And they will miss heaven. I take eternal life seriously. That's why I keep praying for kids in this church. Parents, take serious about eternal life for your kids. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us as far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. In heaven, not only that you have eternal life, you're going to have the glory of God. You're going to look so glorious all the time. The glory of God is going to be on your body. You will look different. I cannot explain because I have not been there, but you're going to have the glory. Amen? Amen? Some of you already look good. Over there, going to look better. So full of glory. Sometimes I notice some member in this church, when they first came to the church, they looked so dull, dark. But after a few months, wow, you look good. Glorious. The glory of God is on you. Amen? Amen. Not only that, I like this one. I like this one because I worked two jobs for many years. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. There remain, therefore, a rest for the people of God. Oh, in heaven, I can rest. <laughs> after, after working so hard for many years as a neurosurgeon and as a pastor, now I work hard, that's okay, I run the race, but when I get to heaven, oh, I can rest and spend time with Pastor Damo up there. <laughs> spend time now too? Oh, Pastor Damo said now too. Okay, sure. <laughs> Revelation 21, 27. But that shall by no means enter, in, enter, it, enter into heaven anything that defies or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's books of life, which means that when we get into heaven, you don't have to suffer with sin, with evil things, with sickness and disease anymore. Nothing bad up there. You're going to live in a very perfect condition in heaven. Revelation 22, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. When we get to heaven, not that we enjoy the presence of God, but we can serve God up there. And we're going to worship him for eternity. If you don't like worship now, if you come to church, you say, I'm going to come to church late, about 40 minutes, because I don't like worship time. I just want to come to listen to sermon and go home right away. When you get to heaven, you're going to be out of place. Because in heaven, you're going to worship for eternity. Get used to it now. <laughs> worship now. Because up in heaven, you cannot avoid. You're going to worship God for eternity. Revelation 19.1. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. The Bible talk about worship God in eternity in heaven. Amen? Amen. Everyone say, I love to worship. I, love to worship. I don't want you to be out of place in heaven. You get there, oh, people worship, but what are I going to do here? Practice now. Rehearse your worship now. So we'll get used to heaven. Last one, Revelation 21 verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Basically, in heaven, you're going to have continual communion with God. You can see Jesus face to face. You can talk to the Father. You're going to have direct communication and relationship with God in heaven for eternity. The old have passed away, but the new things in heaven will come when we get there. Live your life to be ready for eternity. Live your life to prepare for rewards in heaven. Don't waste your time anymore. Don't Waste your time with the stupid news on earth. <laughs> with all the things on earth, I don't waste my time. I want to prepare myself to go to heaven. Let me read a few more scriptures to encourage you, and I'm done. In the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 1. Two. Then you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is. So don't seek the things of the world. Don't be attached to money.
to homes, to cars, to position, to your job. Seek the things from above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not things on the earth. I cannot force you. I just read the scripture to you. Make a decision from now on to be heaven-minded Christian. God-minded Christian. Not earthly Christian. Not material-minded Christian. You don't love money. You love God. You serve God. Amen? Have your mind on the things above. Get ready to meet Jesus. In fact, this is the truth of life. No one knows in this room you will have tomorrow. Amen. You may think that, oh, you know, pastor, thank you for teaching. I'm going to live another 50 years. So this thing I will put on the shelf, this teaching, I don't need to do anything now. We don't know we have tomorrow. Don't waste your time anymore. We can die anytime. And I have seen that because I'm a doctor. I've seen young people die in front of me from car accident. I know one man in the operating room at Evergreen Hospital. He's about 35 years old. He always served me in the operating room. And one day, for a few weeks, I did not see him. I, he looked healthy. And I asked the nurse, where is this man? Oh, he died already from colon cancer. He disappeared. And he did not look like he has a colon cancer. He died quickly. My brothers and sisters, we don't know we have tomorrow. Keep your mind on the things above. Don't be attached to this world. Please. You cannot take anything with you. Be this kind of Christian. Amen? Amen. Wow. So quiet. <laughs> now, what are you going to do? Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Basically, everything you do on earth, with your time, your money, your energy, your talents, your spiritual gift, your property, your resources, everything you do, do it for Jesus, not for yourself. To build the kingdom of Jesus Christ on earth. To bring souls to the kingdom to Jesus. Help them to grow up to become more like Jesus. Everything we do for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. That's why I like when he chowed a while ago, Jesus. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. Amen. If you notice, I never emphasize the word New Hope International Church. Because it's just a church name. I never want to build in a denomination because denomination give glory to the man. I want to build Jesus' church for Jesus. Bring people to Jesus. Help people to love Jesus. Help people to grow to become like Jesus. You do everything for Jesus. Colossians 3, 23, 24, last one. And Thank you for the picture. And, what, and whatever you do, do it heartily. So as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Do everything for the Lord. Yes. And he will reward you. I told Pastor Da, lately I noticed something about Asian culture. L last thing I want to say. I don't know American, but in Asian culture, I find out that not only Thai, Vietnamese too, yesterday, <laughs> they told me. I don't know, Mian? In Asian culture, people like to grab the microphone and become number one. <laughs> I'm the head here. I'm the senior pastor. I need to have a position in the church. People need to respect me. This is Asian culture. That is not right. 
It's not about your position. It's not about grabbing microphone. It's not about having title in the church. It's about living for Jesus. Amen. You can sweep the floor for Jesus. Yes. You don't need to have title in the church at all. You serve him because you love him. Yes. So Asian people in this room, please don't seek title. Please don't seek position. It's about loving God Amen. and live your life for God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to have heavily culture here, not Asian culture. Yeah. I'm not against Asian. But there are wrong things about Asian culture that we need to repent and change. Amen. I don't know about American. I don't think American has that culture. American very nice. <laughs> so in conclusion, I'm done. In conclusion, this teaching is to remind you to think about eternity, to have your mind on the things above. Don't be overwhelmed and be dragged into the things of today, of the world. Live your life for Jesus. From now on, examine your motive, your heart, Consider how you spend money, how you spend time, how you spend your energy. Find out your gift things, your spiritual gift. Use the gift. Serve God. Take care of your leaders. Take care of one another. Live your life for one another. Be the builder. Be the encourager, supporter. Because when you do that to others, not only that, God will reward you on earth. He will reward you in heaven. Amen. Amen. From now on, be a person who bless others. Give to others. Don't think about yourself. Don't be self-centered. Because when you live for God and live for others, the Lord will take care of you. And he will reward you. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us so much and you remind us of this truth today. I know, Lord, your Holy Spirit told me to preach this message this Sunday. You want to remind your people in this church and those on live stream, Lord. Father, may your Holy Spirit keep reminding us how to live on earth here, that we will not set our mind on the things below here, but on the things above. Father, thank you so much for giving us the Holy Spirit. Give us the grace to be able to live the life that honors Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You listen to the whole teaching, and I believe that you heard what God said to you, and you are the doer of the Word of God. The Bible promised that when we obey God's commandment, we shall be blessed. And you are that person, you are blessed by the hand of God. Please subscribe to our channel and click like and also click the notification bell. God bless you. The Lord loves you so much. I and Pastor Da love you too. See you in other teaching. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken and you are free from the bondage and you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace his blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, His favor. And you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat. And you shall have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision 
the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you and you shall be his witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jehoshua Hamachim.